All right, in this video, <clears throat> we're going to talk about solving um, some trigonometric equations. Um, and what I'm going to do is, instead of finding all solutions, I'm just going to find solutions to these equations that fall in the interval 0 to 2 pi. And also, just for my own sake, um, I put part of the unit circle over here, the values that go with pi over 3, pi over 4, and pi over 6. So just as a refresher, really for myself more than anything, um, so let's solve a couple of these. So as our first example, let's solve, say, 2 cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. All right, well, to solve 2 cosine x minus 1, um, the way I think about it, you know, if I see basically a cosine to the first power, you know, the same way that you would solve if it just said 2x minus 1 equals 0, the same way that you would solve that problem is the same way that you'll solve 2 cosine x minus 1. And in this problem, you would simply add 1 to both sides and divide by 2. Well, that's the same thing we're going to do on this problem. We're going to add 1 to both sides and get 2 cosine of x equals 1. And then we'll simply divide both sides by 2 to get cosine of x equals 1 half. All right, so now I have to think about angles on the unit circle. And remember, cosine represents the x-coordinate. So I find the first place where my x-coordinate is 1 half. And one place where cosine of x equals 1 half is at the angle pi over 3. So that means x equals pi over 3 is going to be a solution. And on the left side of the unit circle, all the x-coordinates are negative, so that won't be a solution. But if you reflect that angle down, that will be another solution, and that's going to give you the angle 5 pi over 3. Because again, the whole distance around being 2 pi, which is 6 pi over 3, well, if you go 1 pi over 3 less, you're at the angle pi over 3. So those will be our, our solutions um, for this equation in this example. So let's do uh, a couple more of these, some that are maybe a little more difficult. Suppose we have sine of 2x equals cosine of x. One trick to solving um, these problems is going to be to simply to use um, trig identities. And there's a trig identity for sine of 2x that says that's equivalent to 2 sine of x, cosine of x. And on the right side, we still have our cosine of x hanging out. And on this stuff, you have to be careful. Um, a lot of people will have a tendency to simply divide both sides by x, which is not correct. Um, you end up losing solutions that way. It's kind of equivalent, you know, if you were solving the equation x squared equals x. If you were to divide both sides by x, you would get simply that x equals 1, which definitely is a solution to the equation x squared equals x. But the problem is, 0 is also a solution. And you get 0 as a solution by subtracting x from both sides, factoring, and then setting each piece to 0. You'll get your 0 solution, and you'll get your other solution of 1 as well. So in general, what you need to do is to set equations equal to 0 and to factor them. So that's what we're going to do on this one. Um, if you divided by cosine of x, it would be equivalent to dividing by x, and you would end up losing solutions. So we'll have 2 sine of x, cosine of x, minus cosine of x equals 0. Well, now I can factor my cosine of x out of both sides, or excuse me, out of both factors, and I'll be left with 2 sine of x minus 1 equals 0. And now I set each piece equal to 0. So I'll have that cosine of x has to equal 0 or I'll have that 2 sine of x minus 1 has to equal 0. And adding 1 and dividing by 2, we'll get sine of x equals 1 half. So let's think about places where cosine equals 0. Again, going back to our unit circle, cosine is the x-coordinate. Well, the first place where the x-coordinate is 0 is at pi over 2. It's also going to be 0 at the bottom of the circle, which is 3 pi over 2. So we'll have pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 being our solutions for the first part. 
And then to figure out where sine of x is 1 half, again, I have to think about angles. So let's squeeze this in here. And the y coordinate is represented by sine. So the first place that sine is 1 half is going to be at pi over 6. Likewise, on the other side, it's going to be 1 half, which is going to be the angle 5 pi over 6. So we'll get x equals pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 as our solutions to this problem. Let's do, uh, let's do a couple more. So let's do as many as we can before we run out of time here. Suppose I have now um, 2 plus cosine of 2x and that's equal to 3 cosine of x. So in this problem, same idea, you're going to have to use a trig identity on the cosine of 2x. And there's a couple different trig identities that relate, that, that involve cosine of 2x. And the one that I'm going to use is that cosine of 2x can be replaced with 2 cosine squared of x minus 1 and again that's still equal to 3 cosine of x. And at this problem basically you have a quadratic equation involving cosine square, or excuse me, involving cosine. So if we get rid of our parentheses and just kind of reorder things, I'll have a 2 cosine squared of x. Positive 2 minus 1 is going to be positive 1. We still have our 3 cosine of x on the right side. And now if I subtract the 3 cosine of x, I'll have 2 cosine of x, or 2 cosine squared, minus 3 cosine of x, plus 1, equals 0. And basically the same way that 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0 would factor, the same way that factors the 2 cosine squared of x minus 3 cosine of x plus 1 is going to factor. And let's see if we can't just use some parentheses. So we'll have a 2 cosine of x term and a cosine of x term. Again, the only way we're going to get positive 1 is to either use a plus 1 plus 1 or a minus 1 minus 1. But we want this negative in the middle, so it looks like it's going to have to be negative 1, negative 1. And now we do the same trick. We just set each piece equal to 0. If we set the first piece equal to 0, we'll add 1 and divide by 2 and get cosine of x equals 1 half. And on the other part, we'll get that cosine of x equals positive 1. And again, from a second ago, we figured out where cosine of x equals 1 half. We said that was at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So we'll have pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And cosine of x being 1, that's going to happen at the angles 0 and at the angles 2 pi. Again, we're only finding solutions between 0 and 2 pi and there will be your solutions to that original problem. All right, let's maybe do one more here, if I can squeeze one in before we run out of time. Suppose we have sine of x equals tangent of x. Same idea here. You can rewrite this as sine of x. You can rewrite tangent as sine of x over cosine of x. Same idea as in the other problem, you have to be careful not to divide both sides by sine of x. But again, what you can do is you can subtract away sine of x over cosine of x, set that equal to 0, and then simply factor out the sine of x term. So if you pull out sine of x, you'll have 1 minus 1 over cosine of x equals 0. So if we set each piece equal to 0, we'll get sine of x equals 0. If we set the other part, the 1 minus 1 over cosine x equal to 0, if we add, we'll get 1 equals 1 over cosine of x. If you multiply, we'll get that cosine of x equals 1. And again, this will be where our solutions are. So sine of x equals 0 at the angles 0 and pi and 2 pi. Cosine of x equals 1 only at the place um, at the angles 0 and 2 pi. So we've got a, a little bit of redundant solutions. So 
we could just simply box in these solutions and say that that's our answer. So, hope these videos help. If you need some more help, feel free to visit my website and check out the other videos.